Good day, ladies and gentlemen, friends and neighbors. Today we're going to look at Unit 0, Lesson 6. This, my goodness gracious, this is a very important lesson, and it's kind. It's going to be kind of, uh, it's going to be several parts, maybe three videos, uh, at least two videos, possibly three, but this is a very uh, important topic for later on this year and for certainly next year and it's a very elusive topic the whole idea of square roots and what what a square root is and simplifying square roots and um, yes yeah, so let's jump right into it with the definition the definition of a square root the square root of a and here I'm talking about the square root of a is b the square root of a is b if and only if b squared is a. So this is our definition. So the square root of a is b if and only if b squared is a. Therefore, the square roots of 25, or the square roots of 25, well, they're going to be 5 and negative 5, since 5 squared is 25. And if I square with parentheses, negative 5 squared is 25. So... The thing that is elusive for a lot of students is the fact that if I just look at this expression, the square root of 25, that's 5. That's not 5 and negative 5. That is just 5. The expression square root of a is always positive and only exists if a is greater than 0. If a is not negative, a is greater than or equal to 0. But this is always 5. It's not 5 and negative 5. That's what we call the principal square root of 5. Therefore, the square roots of 25 are the square root of 25 and the negative square root of 25. This is negative 5 because the square root of 25 is 5. This guy here, this just the square root is called what we call the principal square root or the positive square root, if you will. The positive square root. And most of the time, we're only going to be worried about the principal square root in in this particular lesson, we're only going to be worried about principal square roots or the positive square roots. But you just have to remember that if somebody down the road says, hey, Lee, what's the square root of 9? That's not positive. That does not equal positive and negative 3. The square root of 9, ladies and gentlemen, is just 3. If I ask a human being, hey, what are the square roots? What are the square roots, dude? What are the square roots of 9? Well, the square roots of 9 are, they're going to be positive square root of 9, which is 3, and negative square root of 9, which is negative 3. Why? Because negative 3 squared is 9, and 3 squared is 9. That's all got to do with the definition of the square root. The symbol signifies, this symbol, the square root, signifies only the principle. The two most common properties of square roots used to simplify, so now we're going to get into what's it mean to simplify a square root. And I don't mean taking my graphing calculator and estimating the square root with a with a graph with a calculator, scientific or not. I'm talking about a simplified square root. And I'll go in the definition of what a simplified square root here in a bit. But before I use before I use a simplified square root, I'm gonna have a brief little review over the perfect square number. So I'm going to go back to this page right here, and I'm going to look at the perfect square numbers, the perfect squares, the perfect square. So I'm going to have a column of a, a squared, and the square root of a squared. Right? And these are the real numbers. Well, 1 squared, 1, 1 squared is 1, square root of 1 squared is 1, 2, 2 squared is 4. Here's a perfect square. And it's a perfect square because the square root of 4 is 2. Simplified square root. 3. 3 squared. This is my this is my, my perfect square numbers. Square root of 9 is 3. And we go all the way down. 4 squared is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. 
I squared is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. These are our perfect. These are our perfect squares. Perfect squares. Perfect squares. 6 squared is 36. The square root of 36 is 6. 7 squared is 49. The square root of 49 is 7. So these are our perfect square numbers. And we could keep going. Square root of 64 is 8. Square root of 81 is 9. Square root of 100 is 10. These are our perfect square numbers. And we're going to use those to simplify square roots. So we really need a definition of what is a simplified square root expression. So I'm going to pop another page in there that the notes doesn't have so we're going to add that to our notes so i'm going to add a blank page there and we're going to talk about the definition what is a simplified square root expression And I believe there are some blank pages. If you go to the right, to the left of the beginning of this unit, you'll see a blank page that you're going to want to put the simplified square root expression on. So if I have a, an expression is simplified, let's go this guy right here. The square root of M is simplified. when M has no perfect square, and we just went over what a perfect square was, perfect square factors. So square root of M is simplified when M has no perfect square factor. So let's do a couple examples even before I get into my notes, a couple easy ones. So <clears throat> examples, a square root of 75. Well, you silly head. The square root of 75. That's not simplified because you notice 75 has a factor that's a perfect square because we can easily see that the square root of 75 is the square root of 25 times 3. And now we're going to use a property that we're going to talk about the next page. This is actually equal to the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. Well, what's the square root of 25? We know from the previous example that the square root of 25 is 5, so this is going to be 5 square root of 3. And now I, I look, does this expression, does m, the number underneath the square root symbol, does that have any perfect square factors? Of course not. 3 is prime. So the square root of 75 simplified is equal to 5 square root of 3. Alrighty. And in like manner, another easy example, the square root of 8. The square root of 8 is going to be the square root of 4 times 2, which is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 4 is 2, so this is 2, square root of 2, this is simplified. This, 2 square root of 2, is the square root of 8 simplified. They're the same thing. That's what these equal signs mean. So here's our definition. The square root of m is simplified if m has no perfect square factor. So let's go back to our notes then, and here we are. The two most common properties of square roots used to simplify that is the square root of A times B is the square root of A times the square root of B. An example is square root of 245. We can look and know it has a it has a 5, so we're let's, we're, now we're just going to take our calculator and figure out the, to see if 245 has any perfect squares. In golly gee, we see that it does. The square root of 245, by little investigation, is going to be the square root of 49 times 5. Because 5 times 9 is 45, carry the 4, 
245. Well, I'm going to use that property. That's going to be the square root of 49 times the square root of 5. The square root of 49 is 7. So that's 7 times the square root of 5. So these guys, the square root of 25, the square root of 245 is equal to 7. The square root of 5 simplified. This is the simplified version of the square root of 245. And it is important to note that we will see this later on. It's very important to note that the square root of a, a has got to be positive number. A is a positive number. The square root of a times square root of a is square root of a squared, which is a. But we're starting off here, and we're starting off where a is greater than or equal to zero. It has to be, or the square root expression doesn't exist. We'll talk more about that later, but the square root of a times square root of a, the square root of a squared, which is a, square root of 13, square root of 13, square root of 13 squared, which is 13, then this is, if and only if a is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, that's just a nice thing that we need to note there. And then the second property right here, the second property used to simplify square roots is this guy right here, property two, which is the square root of a over b is square root of a divided by square root of b. So the first thing I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to separate this. This is going to be the square root of 8 over the square root of 49. We know what the square root of 49 is, and we know what the square root of 8 is. The square root of 8 is square root of 4 times square root of 2 over 7. And we know the square root of 4 is 2, so this guy is going to be 2, square root of 2, because the square root of 4 is 2, over 7. So that's that rascal simplified to square root of 2 over 7 is equal to square root of 8 over 49. Do a couple other examples here. All right, so we have uh, more examples to... Try here. Let's see here. 225. We need to investigate a little bit to see if uh, see if there's any perfect squares. Well, if we do some investigation, 225 What is that? We're looking a little bit. Well, 225, we can easily see if we can take a 5 out. That's equal to the square root of 25 times the square root of 9. Because 9 times 25 is 225. And I think we can see that pretty easy even without a calculator. Well, what's the square root of 25? The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 9 is 3. So the square root of 25, oh, if I knew all my perfect squares, I would see that the square root of 25 is indeed 15. So let's do 252 here. 252. Let's see here. We're thinking. We're thinking about 252. Well, 252 is going to be the square root of 4. Let's equal that. The square root of 4 times the square root of 63. Well, because 4 times 63 is 52. Well, that's going to be 2. But hey, what does 63 have? 63 has a 9. So I can write this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 7. Well, what's the square root of 4? 2. Square root of 9 is 3 times square root of 7. And we can certainly multiply the 2 times 3, so this is going to equal 6 square root of 7. And keep in mind, oh, you could have had that as square root of 36 times square root of 7. There's more than one way to get to the simplified square root. I think 45 is an easy example. Let me erase this little stuff here that's annoying. Square root of 45 is going to be a simple one. That's going to be the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 5. That, ladies and gentlemen, 
It's a pretty simple one. All right. Let's do these examples here. Oh, well, we know what the square root of 45 is. We just did the square root of 45. Well, let's write it like this. This is going to be the square root of 45 over the square root of 36. And I know what the square root of 45 is by the prefix example is 3 square root of 5 by this example here. Over in the square root of 36 is 6. And now I can still reduce more because 6 has a factor of 2. So this is going to be the square root of 5 over 2. All right. So let's do the next example. Keep in mind if you need to pause the video, which a lot of times, that's why we try to keep the videos under 20 minutes or something like that, so that you, while you're watching the videos, pause the video. Follow the, follow, and pa pause the video, sorry, write your notes down, then you can follow the discussion given in the video. So, okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to write this as square root of 448 over the square root of 27. I have the 27s figured out in my mind a little bit. So, what's the square root of 48? Well, there's certainly a 4 that goes into there. So, that's going to be the square root of 4. times the square root of 112. And this is going to be the square root of 9 times square root of 3. So, oh, and if I notice right off the bat that 112 also has another square root of 4 in it. So this is going to be square root of 4 times square root of 4 times square root of 28. Over, and I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. Whoop, I forgot their square root there. This is going to be 3 square root of 3. Square root of 9 is 3. All right. Oh, and if I look at 28, and I'm going to bring that bad boy over here. This is going to be, I'm going to write these as 2. Well, the square root of 4 times square root of 4 is, is 4. So this is going to be 4 square root of 28, which is square root of 4 times square root of 7 over 3 square root of 3. And so the square root of 4 is 2. This is going to be 4 times 2 square root of 7 over 3 square root of 3. And this is going to be 8 square root of 7 over 3 square root of 3. Now this presents a problem. It is very nice. This, ladies and gentlemen, which is correct, this is not a simplified square root either. And here's the second part of the definition of what a simplified square root entails. So I'm going to find that and I'm going to add to my definition of a simplified square root. Here's the second part of this definition. Part two. A simplified square root, this is part one. Go part two. A simplified square root expression. has no square roots in the denominator. Whoop. Sorry. I have to rewrite that over here so I can get it all in there. 
So it can have no square roots in the denominator. So there's two parts to this simplified square root expression. Part one, a simplified square well, part one is the, under the square root symbol, where is it? M can have, have no perfect square factors. And then part two is a simplified square root can have no square roots in the denominator. And if I go back to my last example here, this guy here has a square root in the denominator. So we got to get rid of him to get make sure that he's simplified. So this dude is not simplified. So what? how do we deal with that? Well, here's how we're going to deal with this. And I think there's going to be room over here. So if what I want to do here is I have 8 square root of 7 over 3 square root of 3. I'm going to multiply this by 1. In what form? Square root of 3 over square root of 3, which is 1. And now you notice on the bottom, I have a square root of 3 times a square root of 3, which is going to be 3. That's going to get the square root out of the denominator. And what do I have? So now I have 8 square root of 7 square root of 3 over 3 times 3. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. And what do I have here? Now I want to simplify. And 7 and 3 both are prime. So this is going to be 8 square root of 21 over 9. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the simplified version of this guy right here. And boy, oh boy, one of the problems that people have with these rascals is there are a lot of steps. But there's more than one way to get here. Those are equal. This is simplified. This is not simplified. You notice 21 has no perfect square factors, and there's no square roots in the, sim in the denominator. Okay, so that's lesson six, part one. And we will continue down the row with part lesson six, part six, part.